When all is said and done, what will you say? Will you say that you shifted expectations or the ground shifted beneath your feet? So thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Hayley. I am the CEO of The Shift. Um, I'll also introduce you to the managing director of The Shift, who's my business partner, uh, Chris Towers. G'day, g'day. How are you going? So we are a global event marketing agency based out of Sydney, Australia. Um, and work with clients such as Reebok, Red Bull, Vans, Harley Davidson, and not-for-profits such as Black Dog Mental Health Institute. Uh, we also work with the Mito Foundation, in which we've assisted in developing the Blood Long Walk since its inception in 2013. We work with small to large budgets and teams with one person to teams of 20 or 30. And our approach is an anything's possible approach. We pride ourselves on doing right by our staff and our clients and our community. And our purpose is to shift mindsets for a positive change through event marketing. So we want to help brands and organizations develop marketing assets for 2021 and beyond. As I said previously, please feel free to ask questions as we go and we'll get to some of those at the end. So our industry, um, the industry like ours has been impacted, which is an ongoing effect for not-for-profits and for brands. Whether it's sales or fundraising or another source of income revenue, your business has most probably been impacted. And this could potentially have been really good for your business. It could be a positive impact. So maybe in the way that you aren't looking for, so it might not be revenue, but maybe in the way that you do business or the projects that have come out of it. So you could have gained funds or you could have gained data um, that you would never have had before or technology that's been developed in other industries which is impacting us, or organizations that might have innovated which could have a positive impact on you as a marketer. So how can we use that moving forward? Today we're going to discuss how you can develop a growth marketing asset and exactly what a growth marketing asset is. So we want to help you create legacies for your brand. So what does an asset mean? When we talk about assets, we're not talking about a tangible asset like a car or a house in the manufacturing or the accounting sense. What we are saying is that what you could have is a concept or idea for an event or project or even an existing event, but unless you activate all the elements around it, then all it is is an event or a project. So I'm going to give you two examples. The first example is what we'll call the traditional model. So you have an event once a year. Three months out from the event, you contact your past participants, you put some spend behind bringing them back on board, as new, and then you also put some spend behind new participants. You execute the event, and then don't contact them again for another year. Potentially, you add them to your sales funnel or your fundraising database, and you ask them to buy something at Christmas, or you ask them to donate something at tax time. But you don't engage with them, and you don't find out actually what drives them and what they need. So a year later, you contact them again and you ask them to join your event again and you ask them to bring some friends. But you're having to spend quite a lot of money to convert them into doing this and to engaging them again. You've not nurtured this community. So you're actually in a push marketing model, reinventing the wheel every time. So here is how you could do it in the future. And the easiest way for us to explain growth marketing asset and CT, please jump in if I'm not making sense here. So you have an existing participation event that happens once a year. You build a community through whatever channel your market sits on. So you may sit on Facebook as a person, but where does your target market sit? Build a community on that channel. You consistently talk to them, provide them with content that they love from events that they have participated in with you or with partners. Ask them on their their opinion for future ideas. Connect them with other brands or not-for-profits that you both align with. So you could partner up with an aligned brand. If you're a shoe brand, you partner up with a clothing brand and you can all talk together. You can build a community together or you can sort of cross promote. So you speak to them on their level as person to person. Six months later, you do an online version of the event. You've been talking to them already. They know who, who you are. You ask them to invite friends and they'll give you the honest answer, yes or no. They might even ask, 
how many can I bring? Or can I bring another community that I think that will fit and align with your community? Three months after that, you then provide them with a training manual to help them get fitter or get mentally prepared for the participation event, which is happening in three months. So the training manual is a subscription based manual on a really low monthly fee. You joined up with a corporate partner in fitness, for example, or you brought your industry, you brought your own fitness brand into this. And so they've now done two events with you and they're doing a subscription model with you. They trust you, you're part of their community and they're part of your tribe. So they sign up to a low tiered paying subscription, which gives them even more access to your community and training to an event that they're familiar with. The time comes round again for your annual event. Your marketing spend can now be reduced on that one person, for example, on your community because they're already engaged. You've been talking to them all year round. They're part of your tribe. So that marketing spend can then be reallocate, reallocated into a marketing advertising spend to new community members. Ones just like you, you already have because you talk to them all the time. You know them, you know what they want, you know what they need, so it's easier to market to them. After the annual event, you notice few need a new challenge or some of them are injured. And you know this because they love giving you feedback and they talk to you all the time. So you develop a rehab program because they might not be able to participate, but they still want to be part of the tribe and they still, want, they still have other interests which you know about because they talk to you all the time. So you launch another event or another program which is virtual or live or a hybrid or a different time of year, but it's all connected. It's all a growth asset coming out of one single idea. At this stage, you're a pool marketing model. So your community, including your consumers, your participants, your stakeholders, your suppliers, you have aligned brands will be sending like-minded people to you. Do you need me to slow down? Has anyone got any comments or chats there? There's no, no questions coming through yet. No? Okay, well, hope, hopefully that all makes sense. <laughs> all right, so that was a, a summary and example of what a growth marketing asset could be looking into the future. All right, so this is what we've done previously. What do we do now? So currently it's known as a full service or 360 degree marketing campaign. And so we want to increase brand awareness. We go out with a digital campaign or we brand some items at an event and then we do a survey afterwards and ask them if we've got good brand recall. Some companies are great at producing content and using it to extend the life of a campaign. However, not all companies are on board with doing that yet. So marketing assets are traditionally items that you use to market your project. So social media templates, email templates, the same with sales assets. So you have point of sales items and these don't necessarily bring a quantifiable return on investment. So as much as they're an asset, it doesn't necessarily mean that they bring in value. So from now on, I'm just gonna talk about them as tools so that we don't get confused with assets and tools. If you're not for profit, your tool might have been an email template that you send out at a certain time of year, like end of financial year or Christmas. And that template was your asset, but is now your tool. Or you have volunteers um, that you donate for fundraising opportunities. So when you have been doing your 360 degree marketing and the campaign stops, it's not long term. It's not built for enduring businesses through downturns and growth times. And I think that we saw a lot of that in the last six months. Um, however, we did see some absolutely fantastic, um, I hate to use the word pivot, but we did see some fantastic pivots, which I think that, that we can definitely learn from. So um, we can also learn from 360 degree marketing. And as with everything in 2020, it's going to evolve and it's going to be supercharged. So I'm not saying throw away 360 degree marketing. I'm saying, how do we, how do we grow that and how do we build on that for the future? So as I said, let's think of those uh, 2000 assets as tools because they do have a place. We need templates, we need data, we need media releases, we need automated emails, and they're all tools for growth. Let's think of the one-off events and 360 degree marketing, marketing campaigns as push marketing, 
So we go out and we sell, 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 and then we're quiet, and then we go out again and, and do. So the future is pull marketing, creating an event which will have so many other elements that people want to join you. So your cost per acquisition will go down because you have a pool strategy within your growth marketing asset. The period that we've been in has been quite unique in more ways than one. It won't continue to be like this, um, not that I've got a crystal ball, but I don't think that it'll continue to be like this, but I don't think that it'll also go back to normal. So um, as I was saying before, some companies um, and not-for-profits have done some fantastic um, pivots in the last six months. So charities have gone to online fundraising initiatives. Um, brands have sold more online than ever. Marketing budgets have been retargeted to, to online and consumer behavior and habits have changed and accelerated um, to a point that we might not ever go back well, I'd, in, in the way that, that we were before. So most organizations have in common right now is that they developed a huge database over the last six months. And some have new online events and some have a new line of products. So now we're gonna talk about what to do with that. So we want to turn those ideas and concepts or data into growth assets. So this idea is built from your marketing need with a view to providing long-term legacy with, within your organization. So it can be activated at different times on lots of different levels. Still no questions? Still no questions. Ross says he's following, so that's good. Brilliant. All right, so we've got seven different elements of a DNA growth asset. So this is a diagram that we've put together to try and make it a bit more succinct for you. Um, so if we start at the top, we've got innovation, community, experience, value, journey, identity, and games. And we'll go into that um, in a lot more detail shortly. So a growth marketing asset is about a visionary concept that can house many different ideas and creative elements that all work together. So using the strength of an idea or concept or an existing item in your business and creating a community that consistently provides a return on investment and potentially for years to come. It's about being scalable as well. So having the entry level tier, the mid level tier and high level tier and being able to engage your community throughout that whole thing. Um, it's about creating something bigger. Um, it's about having a, a bigger vision um, and then also being able to activate different items at different times of year. So there's a few different phases of a growth asset. Um, so three different phases. Phase one is uncover. So identify your organization and market need. I think that's, this is the most important one. So you need to understand who your market are and what your market need is. This is about your who. Um, and when I say your who, I mean your market. So this should be really high level, um, purpose driven, related back to your brand, back to your organization. So, so your market need relates back to a purpose, but is so high level and you sell shoes and your objective is to sell shoes. But what's, the actual purpose of your asset. Now, for example, it could be something like feeding the soul of generations to come. All right, within that, I would hear that and go, well, we could do something to do with food, feeding the soul. We've got generations. We could actually do an event for different generations and we could come up with lots and lots of different projects and ideas and concepts and content that will deliver around that. So this high level strategy or high level purpose um, needs to be part of your brand. And um, as I said, a, a real vision. So phase two is ignite. So strategy and planning. So it's about taking the idea and wrapping it up in a strategy for all the DNA elements. So remember, they don't all need to be activated at once. And sometimes they will develop over time too. So you might not have the plan to begin with, it needs to be so robust in the steps that each part can be activated individually or together. And it, it also needs to be able to evolve depending on your budget resources and timing. 
Um, so phase three is Ignite. So it's all about execution of the experience. So each cell can be activated, but if one falls over, your asset is still able to bring revenue into your company. So I think we saw in the last six months quite a lot of um, events. You know, obviously we've, um, we've been through a pandemic and, and live events weren't able to happen. So then everything stopped. Whereas from a not-for-profit or a brand, if you had a growth marketing asset, you could activate different parts of it and be able to change and pivot those things. Maybe I'll just, I'll just jump in with a, with a question that's come through privately. Um, so yeah. it's just probably a point of clarification. Um, the, so the question is, so the growth asset is the idea that has return. So it's not necessarily a physical asset, like a company asset, like a car or a, something like that. Um, and so I guess the question, the, the answer to that is exactly, that is exactly what we're saying. So it's, but we're talking about something that um, has, that we can build a, a strategy around. And we're going to get into this a little bit deeper that will continue to grow and, and have a return on investment for the company. What I might do, I've seen quite a few people have actually come in later on. And yeah. um, what I might do is at the end, I'll go back to the example of what a growth marketing asset yeah. is in in return in um uh relation to yep. events and then that might make more sense all right so growth marketing asset wheel we have made up a few diagrams to try and make it easier um so if you've got a really top line vision or goal relating to your market need within your organization then it should be able to be returned to and reinvented on multiple levels at multiple times so it starts with the creation and ideation. So this, and then it goes into strategy and planning. So what do we want to do with that idea? What are the objectives of the asset? This is top line and it's going to go back to the uncovery stage quite a bit and making sure that you have that right. Then it's breaking it down into the different cells for today, tomorrow and the future. Then we go into execution. So this may, may be for one element or for them all. So constantly learning from the strategies you put in place prior to execution to grow and build on the growth you're developing. As the world changes, you'll need to meet the market. And so your growth marketing asset will change, but as long as you've got a really high level vision, then you can actually keep developing it and keep innovating it. Your experience and journey will change, but the core growth marketing asset and its purpose doesn't change. And so in this period, we're all told to create something new. Um, and some have been really hugely successful in this and created some completely new or marketed in a completely different way. Um, so the world has already continued to evolve and event marketing is going to keep changing with that. So the future need and changing is that these ideas can actually be evolved. They can be done better. We can we can work with them. So, um, for example, if you did an online fundraising event, um, so next year, that need might not be there, right? So maybe in regional areas or 50% of the people that um, have joined your, your online event may still want to do it online, but there may be some people that want to do it live. There may be some people that want to do it actual virtual. So it's about thinking about that and growing what it is, what this idea was, and being able to evolve that, but keep engaged your community throughout the whole time. All right, so I'm going to go a bit of a deeper dive into um, each cell of a growth marketing asset. Um, so experience, it all starts with an idea. But as I mentioned, you may already have one. So the concept and idea will then need to be one or more ways to be brought to life. So a growth marketing asset needs substance. So a place where you can bring your brand or not for profit into the real world. And the real world may be to stay online. It may be to go virtual. It may be to be a hybrid of them both, or it may be to go live. It may be that you only ever did one event, but now you want to do six. Um, so it could be anything from an athlete project, a content project, um, or a large scale event with 50,000 people. Ideally, it has got an entry, a mid and a high level offering. So like how I referred back at the beginning, so this um, theoretical event 
had, it started off with a live event, then it developed an online event, then it had a training manual, which was a subscription-based um, product or program, and then it had a rehab program after the actual live event. So, and, and that wasn't all done at once, it was done over time and engaging the community. So next up, we've got innovation. So this starts at the Uncover stage, but should be present in all stages. Inside this, if you are currently innovating your asset, and that goes then back again to, for example, the, the manual and the subscription. So then we have identity, so important, and it gets lost so many times throughout events. So it's really important that your growth asset or your project has an identity that ties in with your brand and purpose. Um, it needs to support your overall brand direction and include included in all your branded assets. So what is it that will connect your brand to your project or growth marketing asset to your community? And what is your tone of voice? Now I'm going to, with your tone of voice, how do you speak to your community? So that brings us to um, the community sale. So engagement is key. So they're not just data, they're not just numbers, and they can give you really valuable insights all day, every day throughout the year. They can be your voice as well, they can be your advocates. So why would they want to join you? And they join you because you're offering what they need, because you've thought about what they need from now. Um, and if you fulfill what they do, they'll and talk to them and listen to them, they'll become your advocates. This will pull more people to you, and this will come back to your top level purpose. So there are also partnerships in your community, um, which are really important. And I think moving forward, uh, the way that the world is and the way that the world is going and the way that I would love to see the world go is that we collaborate more. So these might consist of suppliers, other brands, corporate partners, other charities, other not-for-profits. Um, now is the time to collaborate. Don't compete. Um, you can learn off each other. So how do you use them as partners? And how do they use you as partners? Um, I think as well, I, I had an example um, earlier on about if you had this event and you were going to do a training program, why not use a corporate partner or a fitness partner or launch a new fitness brand and, and join it up? Um, so you can create community partners and they will also be your voice. They will also advocate for you. And if they have a database, they will bring them over to you. Next up is journey. So what is a community journey? How do you take them from being a customer to part of your community? How long can you extend your asset? It might be at the core of a live event once a year, but is it worth investing $5,000 in filming to get various cuts and then you've got content to last a year or longer. So what do you need to extend it for as long as possible? What does the experience bring to your community and how can your community remember the memorable moments and keep your organization top of mind? Then we go to games. Um, so we're calling games is, is essentially revenue or awareness. So what are your sales goals? What's your revenue goals? What's your brand awareness goals, your data goals, your fundraising goals? Um, you do need to be prepared to spend money, um, but figure out what your CPA is. And ideally, once you start building a community and you start building the community um, with them at the core and them as their needs, you'll actually be able to drop some of your marketing spend there. You will then develop a pool marketing strategy and you'll be able to reallocate your marketing budget um, to, to increase your community. Last but definitely not least is value. So essentially data and research, pre, post, and during the assets campaign. So providing quantifiable results. And I know in the past, in, in 360 marketing, research has always had a place. Um, I know that a lot of the time it is an afterthought. So, oh, we'll do a survey afterwards and see what, and see what they thought. So we just want to make this really, really important um, for moving into the future of event marketing. So where are your target markets sitting right now? How can you start building a brand there, where they are? Can you start talking to them, engaging in them, 
um, and start the research before you finish the plan. Um, I think, Hayley, I'm just going to jump in there. We did have a question that came through on the private messaging about yep. a lot of talk about community and is community the like what's making the difference now? And I think that what you've just said there really illustrates or really answers that question. So just to, just to bring that through. So if anyone else is thinking that. Sorry, what was the question? As about, there's a lot of talk about community um, at the moment and is community what's really making the difference? Or is that really, the, it's, it seems to be a lot, a lot of people. Yeah, talk about I, that. I mean, look, I would say as well, and, and you and I have had a lot of discussions about this, that yes, it's the community, but it's actually, so what's your market need? Yeah. Right. Because once you know what your market need is, then essentially you're aligning your, you're aligning your values and your foundations yeah. with, not just with a brand, but with other people. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, if you know someone else is doing an event or they're part of, they're part of this Facebook, private Facebook group, you know you've got something in common. Yeah. And because otherwise it's just such a big, saturated world out there. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's- Understanding the, your market needs, yes. Yeah, for sure. I think I understand that is it that the community needs to be at every come in at every aspect from end to end. So it's yeah. not just about how do we get something out of them? It's about what can we give to them and how can we involve them and how do, where do we meet them and how, what are they looking for? So it's a conversation and a, an understanding through the whole process. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the most successful events are the ones that have actually looked at the, what the market wants and given yep. it to them understand that. Yep. rather than telling them what it is that they want. Exactly. Um, all right. So this is a bit of a random slide, um, but I wanted to put this in here or we wanted to put this in here because it's becoming more and more important. I mean, to our, us as a business, this is, um, we are non-negotiable that in all of our events, we will have at least two UN sustainability goals um, put into our projects or our events. And it's something that I just um, wanted to bring up because it's really simple. And it's also something that is becoming increasingly um, more of a discussion with the general population. So how can you be sustainable? And sustainable isn't just about the environment. It's about reduced inequalities, um, zero hunger, life below water. So um, can that become part of your, of your growth marketing asset? So in summary, start to think about assets within your business that you can utilize or build on, especially ones from the last six months. Um, many of you would have started virtual walks or fundraising activities or sales online, and how can they fit into the market next year? How can you differentiate yourself? How can you actually build on this incredible database that, that's been built? How will you, I think I've just said this, how will you differentiate yourself? And could you partner? If you were a not-for-profit, could you partner with another not-for-profit that did something completely different, but that you could actually help and work with them? And um, if you're a brand and you've seen a not-for-profit do that, can you work with them? It's just about looking to the bigger world and see who you can partner with and collaborate with um, and what you can build out of it. Because I think we are really moving into a new era of event marketing. Um, by September 2021, we would hope that our industry is, is back to not normal, but back to a boom. And if you already have an engaged com community, um, and, and a built asset and a plan and a strategy, then you're going to be way more, uh, further forward than, than other people in our industry. Absolutely. Yeah. Our emails will come up in a second. So, and if you want to join our um, Facebook group, we're on the shift panel cast, which is, which is our community that we've built over the last six months. Um, we're super proud of it and everyone's really engaging and helpful um, on there. We'll also be doing a concept create collaboration workshop. Uh, we'll be doing one for not-for-profits and one for brands, which will be um, a two-hour facilitation workshop to help uh, not-for-profit and brands work through those first parts of um, uncover and ideation. Um, also, just 
head to our website. And we'd also love to hear your feedback and what other webinars um, you would like to see us do. Thank you very much. Shall we get on to question time? How long should a growth marketing asset go for? So that actually depends on, um, on the organization or business. So a growth marketing asset could, for example, if you were a sponsor of the Olympics, you could build this strategy for four to five years. It could even be an eight year, um, an eight year asset. Right. If you've got four years up to the Olympics and then after the Olympics, you might continue to use the content. You might still be engaging that database or you might actually move that community over to somewhere else. Um, if you're doing a fundraiser or a live event, it might be 10 to 15 years. Um, a product promotion, though, for example, might just be six months. But again, you're creating an asset and creating a community that you can just keep moving through your business. Um, so short and long term um, are different for brands and companies. I just had a question about um, uh, how do you know if your idea can become a growth asset? It's probably a bit of an open-ended one. I'm sure if you want to hit that or not, but um, I, mean I think any idea can become a growth asset. Yeah. Right. You can, you can, pull any idea and take take all the cells of the dna and start building it out and you'll actually find that if you do so we have um, developed an ip that's essentially uh tomorrow today the future and what you can actually do is work out so what is it today what what is it that the market need wants today what does the market need want tomorrow and if you look 20 years into the future what is it that they, they want then and then you can build your idea out from what the need is and how your idea can then maybe develop or form in, in different parts of um, your growth asset yeah i think i would say the same is at the end of the day you know obviously there's great ideas in many different shapes and sizes and and it depends a lot on the organization as well and then it's about the it's about taking it to that ideation phase and stepping through the the phases on the way through. Yeah. And that's all the questions that I have here. Everyone seems yeah. like they. But um, if anyone has any other questions that they'd like to send through to us, as Haley was saying, our details are there on the screen, or you can you can get us at, at the shift agency. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. It's amazing to see so many people on. We really appreciate it. All right, thank, thank you. you. Have a great night. When all is said and done, what will you say? That you conquered the dizzying heights or got dizzy? Will you say that you stood with your brothers and sisters or found family along the way? When all is said and done, what will you say? That you told your own story or helped others live theirs? Will you say that you uncovered long lost secrets or discovered a secret way to get lost? When all is said and done, what will you say? That you connected people with ideas and objects or that you brought ideas and objects to the people? Will you say that you shifted expectations or the ground shifted beneath your feet? When all is said and done, what will you say?